I'm going to call the meeting to order. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Burke County Board of Commissioners regular meeting for Tuesday, November 15th, 2022 at 6 p.m. Madam Clerk, we have Commissioner Abley, Commissioner Taylor, Commissioner Britton, and Commissioner Carswell all in attendance. We have our county finance officer, our county attorney, and our county manager, ma'am. I'd remind everyone to please silence their mobile devices. And if you come to the lectern up front, make sure the, the red light indicator is on so those folks that are following us on YouTube um, can hear what you have to say. This time, I would like to um, ask uh, fellow Commissioner Taylor to lead us in the invocation. And I would ask you to please remain standing as our county attorney will lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. Will you pray with me? Our Father, in your good holy book, you have said to always start your prayer with thanksgiving. And Father, we thank you, even though it's a cold rain. Father, we thank you for the rain that you are providing us. Father, we thank you for our health. We thank you for the strength that you give us to do our daily chores. Father, we thank you for our fellow citizens. Father, we thank you that they have chosen to allow Wayne and I to serve 20 years and have voted us in five times as a county commissioner. Father, we thank you for the breath and the air that we breathe. Father, we pray for your blessings upon our county, upon our citizens, upon their families. And Father, will you, may you continue to bless us and bless our country that we call America. Father, we thank you as we continue with the meeting. You pray that you guide us, direct us, and lead us. We ask this in my Holy Son's name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge of the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, gentlemen, this moves us to approval of the agenda. Um, at this time, we will need to um, uh, amend the agenda and remove presentation number seven, uh, Keith Lawson. Uh, had something unforeseen come up, and so he will need to um, 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 come before us next month. Uh, also, we, uh, we'd like to uh, add the proclamations honoring Commissioners Abley and Taylor as a decision item number four, and we would like to move decision item number, remove, move decision item number three, the introduction of the new county manager to the December regular meeting. Gentlemen, do we have a motion? to approve the agenda as amended. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Abley. All those in favor signify with uplifted hand. Madam Clerk, that is five, zero. Gentlemen, that moves us to item number five, approval of minutes for May 17th, 2022, our regular meeting. Gentlemen, the minutes were previously sent for your review. Are there any corrections? Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Abley. All those in favor, signify with uplifted hand. Madam Clerk, that is 5-0. That moves us to presentations. Presentation number one, Pet of the Month, presented by Caitlin Suttlemeyer, our Animal Services Director. That dog looks cold. <laughs> I think we're all cold. Um, we appreciate you guys having us back to do another Pet of the Month. Um, I have Mr. Rudy here. He is our November Dog of the Month. Um, he's a little nervous. He did have a little accident, so he's a little smelly, but I think we've got him all cleaned up. But Mr. Rudy is a six-month-old Beagle Mix, um, and for any of you guys that follow our Facebook page, he is actually what we are calling, um, we had a litter of what we called crusty puppies come in. So he came in, he had minimal fur and was covered in crust and scab. So as you can see, he looks absolutely beautiful. 
now. Um, he has grown his hair, and we really didn't know what he was going to look like whenever he grew his hair back. So we think he's probably a beagle mix. That's what most of these dogs are looking like. So um, he is ready for adoption. He is on the shyer side, so he's going to take some confidence building. Um, he would really benefit from a, friend, uh, from a family that has another very confident dog that's well-trained, that could teach him how to be a house dog and to grow his own confidence. So this is Rudy. He's adorable. Please, someone take him home. Um, he will love you forever and ever. Um, so we also have our cat of the month. This is Mr. Shadow, and Shadow is spelled incorrectly, so apologize for that. Um, but he is incredibly sweet. This guy just makes biscuits all of the time. Um, so if you guys are looking to add a new cat to your family, come down and visit us. Shadow would love to go home with you. Um, his sister is also with us, so if you're looking for a pair of cats, that may be a great opportunity to adopt both of them. Um, so we are always overloaded with pets. Coming up soon, um, this weekend actually, we are having our Pet Palooza and Rabies Clinic. I'm sure, hopefully, everybody has heard about this by now, but if you have a family member in need, um, this is a two day event. It's going to be on November 19th and 20th at the Crosslink Church in, on Malcolm Boulevard down in Rutherford College. Um, we, it, the first day is a responsible pet ownership education class, and we have partnered with Western Piedmont and they had helped us create some educational videos. It's going to be about a 30 minute video that you will get to sit through. Um, if you do come, you will receive a free hot dog lunch. Um, so that will be provided and if you sit through that, you will receive a free voucher to have your pet's rabies vaccinated the following day. And that will, the rabies voucher will be free if you attend those classes. But they are also available for purchase for $10 to the public. So you do not necessarily have to attend that education class on Saturday, but that will be on Sunday, the rabies clinic. Um, so if you have questions, please reach out to us at Animal Services for that. We can answer any questions that you may have. Gentlemen, questions, comments for Caitlin? Looks like you have your hands full. I was going to give Rudy a treat, but I don't... Rudy, do you want a treat? He's like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> A little nervous. He is nervous. Okay. He's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a few more announcements. If you guys want to watch our social media pages, we do have some Christmas events coming up. We will have a um, Santa Paws for things with Santa Claus for things with paws, where you can come in and sponsor Christmas presents for our pets that we have at Animal Services, and that'll be through the month of December. Um, and a few more events coming down the pipeline for Christmas. So. Come and visit us. We're open till 7 this evening. All right. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Thanks. I would encourage everybody to adopt or foster, and especially look at Rudy. How can you turn that down? Thank you, Caitlin. This moves us to item number two, presentation of responsible pet ownership, education, promo video, and recognition of Western Piedmont Community College personnel. Ms. Kay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I am delighted to be here tonight wearing a different hat to share with you some what I think is very exciting news. Again, as Caitlin mentioned, we have partnered with Western Piedmont Community College to develop those training videos for the Pet Palooza, which will enable Animal Services staff to educate more people in the county on how to be a responsible pet owner. With us tonight, we have Dr. Um, pardon me, we have Jonathan Crumpler from Western Piedmont Community College. Um, he's the pro program coordinator. We also have Julie Church. She is the instructor of the digital effects and animation technology program that that um, the her students actually filmed this video that you're about to see, and the students edited it and did all the work, and so we're very excited. And the students, we have a group of folks here tonight, back here in this corner. Um, the students that worked um, on the filming include Madison Ellington, Rebecca Carson, Colby Franklin, Samuel Milner, Vivian Moya, uh, Abigail Rees Cauldron, and Chelsea Caceres. I hope I didn't butcher that too bad. Um, so 
we got a grant, the foundation got a grant from the Roston Foundation to, to develop a responsible pet ownership education program. And this is gonna really be helpful to us to educate more people. We also hopefully have some members of the um, Animal Advisory Board possibly in attendance. There's Dr. Jenny McGrady in the back. Um, she, along with staff from Animal Services, wrote the scripts uh, for the training videos. And so, Without ado, we'll go ahead and show you that video. My name is Caitlin Settlemeyer, and I'm the Director of Animal Services here in Burke County. Pets are a wonderful addition to our families. They bring us so much joy and unconditional love. One of the best ways we can reciprocate our love for our pets is by learning all that we can to properly care for them and keep them safe. Thanks to a generous grant from the Rawson Foundation awarded to our very own Animal Services Foundation, we will be hosting our inaugural Pet Palooza educational event in drive through Rabies Clinic. This is a two-day event occurring on November 19th and 20th at Crosslink Church in Conley Springs. November 19th will be a four-hour responsible pet ownership educational event from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Educational classes will be held every hour with material covering information about animal services, preventative medicine for pets, rabies laws, common ordinance violations, body language in animals, end of life planning, and how to handle stray animals. There will be a free hot dog lunch provided. Once someone completes the 30 minute education session, they will have the opportunity to meet with staff and volunteers to obtain their free voucher for the rabies vaccines. These will be redeemable for dogs on day two. You will also be able to speak with staff about additional resources that you may need for your pets, such as a spay or neuter, food assistance, housing, or containment systems. We will also have drawings and prizes available to class participants. Some of the grand prizes include five Thanksgiving Day meals for a family of four, as well as free veterinary services for three pets, thanks to Animal Hospital of East Burke. These include core vaccines, a spay or neuter, heartworm tests, and a year's worth of flea and heartworm prevention. This is valued at over $600. November 20th is the free or low cost drive through rabies clinic from 1.30 to 4.30 at Crosslink Church. This event is open to the public and the cost is $10 per pet. However, it's free for class participants with their voucher from day one. For safety reasons, the drive through clinic is for dogs only. Cat owners will be able to redeem their free class voucher or purchased voucher during business hours at Animal Services located at 425 Kirksey Drive in Morganton, North Carolina. Cash or check only at the event. For questions about the event, please email animalservices at burknc.org. If you are unable to attend but need assistance with some of the resources offered, please reach out. We will see what we can do to help you. Everyone deserves a love of a pet, and every pet deserves the love of a family. We hope to see you there. Um, if you would like, um, Jonathan and Julie are in the audience. If, if you want to invite them up to say a few words. Please. or I'm just Please. tickled pink with how it turned out, and I think it's... Come up, Jonathan, Julie. I think it's really going to help promote the event. We're going to be in a paper. We're uh, on social media, radio. This is the type of project that uh, we really uh, look for. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is the type of project that uh, we certainly uh, look forward to working with in terms of uh, you know uh, the city's needs, the county needs. Um, it certainly gives students a great opportunity to get experience, and they got some great experience working on this project. And everybody that we worked with was so nice, and it's just a great type of uh, effort on uh, our part and the the county's part to come together to to do this and. Julie Church is the instructor of our students, and students love her, and she does a great job and goes out of her way and does a lot of volunteer work outside of the classes. So this is the type of work that we really like to do. Would you like to say something? Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks to the students, too. Yeah. So again, I just want to thank everybody that had anything to do with this event. I'm probably going to leave somebody out, but... Um, you know, the foundation is donating one of the Thanksgiving Day meals, Reasons donating some, um, Tamara Robinson's donating some, 
Uh, the college personnel, the students, the Animal Advisory Board, the staff, Dr. Jenny. I mean, this is a classic example of collaboration and what you can do that you've never done before if you take the time and look around and see what resources you have and reach out to folks and see if they want to help. And I'm, I'm so pleased and I hope we have a great event and we just invite the public to come out. There are flyers in the back of the room. If, if the audience wants to take one with them, they're at the back of the room. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Gentlemen, questions, comments? Well, on behalf of the uh, Board of Commissioners, I'd like to thank WBCC staff and students, Van Oppen Marketing, Dr. Jenny McGrady um, from the Animal Hospital of Bur East Burke, Animal Services staff, obviously, um, the Animal Services Foundation, Board of Directors for working collaboratively to develop responsible pet owner training videos and promotional video, which is so professionally done. It looks great. Um, I'd also like to express appreciation of the Roston Foundation for making the mass education event possible. Uh, I'd also like to, once again, as commissioners, encourage citizens to attend this inaugural event um, at Cross Links Church in Rutherford College on November 19th and 20th and express appreciation to Cross Link Church, Reason, the Health Department, and all the vendors and volunteers that you had mentioned already that have worked so hard to create this event. So, fantastic job. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And if I can, if I can recognize any of the foundation members that we have in attendance. Absolutely. Yes, uh, Alan Wood and Nadine McGrady are here tonight. So just wanted to give them a shout out. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, this moves us under uh, our third presentation, an introduction of new emergency communications director. This will be presented by our county manager, Brian Steen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. It's my pleasure to introduce Heather to you. Uh, she comes to us from down east and wanted to see what it was like to live in the mountains and also serve the people of Burke County. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, first, I want to say how excited I am to be here, to be in Burke County. I'm very appreciative and grateful to the county management team for their support and their onboarding of me here. I'm also extremely grateful for my internal departmental management team who have done a tremendous job you know, prior to me coming here and the staff of the 911 Center for the work that they do. And I'm excited for the work that we're going to do together. So uh, thank you for your time and I'm able to answer any questions if you have anything that you want to know. Gentlemen, questions, comments for Heather? Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. You. Welcome to the team. We, we're so excited and thrilled to have you here in Western North Carolina. Oh, there you go. So. It's beautiful, beautiful here. Thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, gentlemen, this brings us to presentation number four, recognition of Miss Morgan and Festival Scholarship pageant winners, and this will be presented by Michelle Gregory, director of Miss Morgan and Festival Scholarship pageant. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Michelle Gregory and this is Michelle Steele and we are, the, we are the directors of the Morganton Scholars Festival Scholarship Program. When we approached the historic Morganton Festival five years ago with the idea of starting this pageant, our first goal was to create a program that would allow our Queens the opportunity to support the city of Morganton and the residents of Burke County <coughs> through social, personal social impact platforms. The program was also meant to um, foster positive relationships between their sister queens and our community. But we had another goal um, to one day take our queens to the next level and be able to compete at Miss North Carolina on stage. We knew it was a tall order because it takes a lot of commitment both personally and financially, but we were committed to seeing this through. To, to making and bringing this tradition back to our community. It's been 40 years since we've had a Miss Morganton actually compete on the stage of Miss North Carolina. And this year we were able to bring that commitment back to this community. 
we still have a lot of work to do before we are ready to travel to High Point this year uh, to compete in the state competition in June. And none of this will be possible without the help of the Historic Morganton Festival Committee and our community sponsors. We have an amazing group of young ladies here with us tonight. After being crowned, they hit the ground running, working on their personal service platforms and attending community events. They assisted with the Spooky Meadows this year. They also assisted with the 5K and the fun run at the festival weekend. And they uh, participated in the downtown Halloween activities. This weekend, our Miss Morganton's Outstanding Teen and our Tiny Miss Morganton, or our Junior Miss Morganton, I'm sorry, are going to Raleigh to meet Miss America. And our Miss Morganton and Tiny Miss Morganton are gonna to go to Gastonia to welcome a new group of sisters into uh, the organization of Miss North Carolina and Miss America. At this time, our 2023 Miss Morganton Royal Court will come up and introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their service program. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kimber Wilson, your ambassador queen for this year, and I'm so excited to be here. My social impact is Alzheimer's awareness, and a lot of people don't really get to see the true face of Alzheimer's until it's someone they love or someone in their family. And I personally have witnessed it and experienced it, and it is horrific. Um, for this year, I've already actually gotten started. I have been in contact with a local home, Hope Ridge, and I have actually talked to their director and I've set up weekly visits with all the patients there that have Alzheimer's or other types of dementia. I plan to go every single week and bring gifts. Um, a local girl, or girl Scout group actually has already made ornaments for the group or for the patients at Hope Ridge for Christmas. I also plan to do tie blankets with my cheer team and get cards made by local elementary schools. And, but this is just the beginning. I will take this as far as absolutely possible, and I hope to do it again next year. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rebecca Feltz. I'm a little Miss Morganton 2023. My platform is Stop Bullying because of looks, race, and social standing. Stop bullying. Everybody deserves kindness and love. Rebecca Feltz, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Gianna Rometti, your junior Miss Morganton, and my service platform is the Golden Girls Club and the West Marion Community Forum. I have served in these platforms from two years running now, and the Golden Girls Club is a group of girls who does random acts of kindness in schools, and we are currently working on having one in every elementary school and middle school in our county. We have held our first charity fashion show in September, raising over $1,200 that was donated to the McKinney Vento program. We collected hygiene products for boys and girls in need, and we plan to be doing two angels from the angel tree in December. As far as the West Marion Community Forum, we strive to help make, to, to make our communities a better place, plus surrounding communities. We have a community garden that myself and five other students have plant harvested and distribute to those in need. We hold a few drive once a month for families who may need canned goods, fresh produce, and we recently hosted a community Thanksgiving. We have served over 500 people, and I have a coat drive planned for December in McDowell and Burke County. I'm putting together care packages for the homeless to distribute in December as well. I also look forward to being your Miss Morganton this year with all these wonderful ladies. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am Mia Westerfield, your Miss Morganton's Outstanding Teen, and my social impact is Backpack Buddies. And Backpack Buddies has two different components. The first component is school supplies, and my parents have always made sure that I know how important school is and how important your education is, and I've been valued and supported it all through my education career. And however, some parents don't have the ability to provide that school supplies and that support to their kids because they have other worries like financial worries or just they can't give that support that the kids need. 
So I'm working on collecting school supplies that can be donated to schools to give to students as they need it because right now we're in the middle of a school year and as of right now kids need additional crayons, they need pencils, notebooks, and even book bags are starting to wear out. So I just want to make care packages to give to all these kids so that they know that they have the support and they have the things to succeed in their education. And with my platform there'll be enough school supplies for students to be able to have additional school supplies as they need. My goal is to have a school store in elementary and middle schools so they can go in and shop without any cost so that they know there's always stuff that's going to be there. There's always going to be supplies and they're always going to be taken care of. And then for the holidays that are coming up, a lot of kids don't know if they're going to have food. They don't know if they're going to have somewhere to sleep. So, and I want to make sure that they have that support. So I'm planning to do food bags or over the weekend. So if the kids are struggling to find food or they're financially, they know that they have a way to eat and they will have food for dinner and they won't have to worry about that. And students can't learn if they're hungry. I know from experience because I'm a student and I can't learn if I'm hungry. So they need to be able to have food to be supported and to do a lot of work. So thank you for your time. And once again, I'm Mia Westerfield, your Miss Morganton's Outstanding Team. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lainey Reese, your Miss Morganton. My platform is Adopt, Don't Shop, and my goal is to help raise awareness for the shelter animals in my community. I recently put up a free pet food pantry box here in our community located at Stidham's Axe Throwing for people to give or take what they may need if they do need assistance. Last month, I was sponsored to buy every dog at Burke County Friends for Animals a hamburger, and I'm not sure who enjoyed it more, the dogs or me. Um, my main goal as Ms. Morganton is to start up a TNR program, which stands for Trap, Neuter, and Release to help stop the overpopulation of animals in the shelters. Um, with my plan, I feel like that this will help. Um, we appreciate your support and we hope that you continue to support us all the way to the crown. Thank you. Absolutely. I would um, like to um, ask all of um, the pageant winners to come down, and you, you and Michelle as well need to be in the picture. Um, and I'm going to ask Commissioner Carswell. He's got a little gift for our pageant winners, and we're going to take a commemorative photo. Gentlemen, what? Once again, on the behalf of the Board of Commissioners, I'd like to thank all the pageant winners, Michelle Gregory and Michelle Steele, for your good work. So thank you all very much. All right, gentlemen, that'll bring us to presentation number five. Our good friend Ed Phillips is going to give us a financial update for the period ending September 30th, 2022. And i got a feeling this is going to be good news. <laughs> yeah, since we had a TDA board meeting today, you've already heard the good news. So uh, you have before you um, the uh, financials from the Tourism Development Authority as of September 30th. Our First Citizens Bank uh, checking account had $711,051.56. If you look below that, our liabilities, uh, deposits received, those are deposits that we take for trolley rentals. Um, when people make a reservation for that, we take a deposit. Once they uh, finally pay that off, it goes into our revenue. The city of Morganton and the town of Valdez, those payables are monies that are in their account through our legislation, and they draw that down periodically. 
and then payroll liabilities is just a monthly liability. Um, but that leaves us with retained earnings of $624,739.93, which is a really good financial position for us. On the uh, other sheet, um, our budget for occupancy tax for this fiscal year was $750,000. For the first two months, we've collected $106,862. Um, and actually, that is going to go way up uh, with the next few months. We've had a really good first quarter of July, August, September, and October, which will be coming in shortly. Um, miscellaneous revenue, I think uh, Commissioner Taylor asked about that at pre-agenda. We have a budget of $44,500. We've collected twelve four eleven as of September 30th. Most of that is for our, our state magazine co-op where we purchase the pages in the magazine and then we turn around and sell those at a discount to Burke County organizations and attractions that want to participate in that. We've done that now for three years and it's been very successful. Um, expense line items are all in line. Um, if you have any questions about that, or I'll be glad to take them. Um, I also do want to mention, uh, if you see our trolley out running around, the Ridgeline Trolley, which is owned by the Tourism Development Authority, we just completed our fall color tours. We've been doing those since the fall of 2015. So this is our seventh year. And this year we set another record. We had um, 17 tours. We had 10 public tours. So it means people could buy the tickets online. They came from all over North Carolina, some from South Carolina. And then we had seven private tours. And a lot, some of those were repeats from previous years. Private tours is a church group or a family group or someone else that actually booked the entire trolley for themselves for our fall color tours. So we had a total of 17 tours in October, uh, 280 passengers that came to Burke County for that fall color tour. The tour goes up to Linville Falls, leaves out of Morganton, Linville Falls, picnic area. Um, they get to hike the falls with the tour guide and then we stop at a other couple of attractions on the way back at the Brown Mountain Overlook is one of them. It's about a six hour tour, it was $55, including tax and everything this year. Unbelievably popular. People say, don't you need to buy another trolley? I'm like, no, we're good with one. <laughs> Gentlemen, you've heard Ed's presentation. Any questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, one, one quick question. Since Wayne and I won't be here, after this meeting, we'll have a little more time. What's it cost to ride that trolley? <laughs> <laughs> we charge, um, it depends on how the, the, the fee for using the trolley actually um, varies a little bit, depends on how you're going to use it, but it's between $125 and $150 an hour. So if a group's going to use it and be using it as a shuttle, it's $150 an hour. That includes your driver insurance, fuel, all that. If it's just going to go back from A to B and maybe park for a little while while people get out and enjoy something, um, a winery or just an attraction, then it's 125 an hour, so it's a little cheaper. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to accept the report as presented. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. All those in favor signify with uplifted hand. That is 5-0, Madam Clerk. That brings us to our last presentation, uh, item number six, proclamation declaring November 9th is one, give, one Burke Gives Day in Burke County. No. And this will be presented by Grayson Barnett, Marketing and Communications Coordinator and Foothills Conservancy, and Beth Willard Patton, Community Engagement Specialist, South Mountain Children and Family Services. So how are y'all? Thanks for having us. Um, I'm Beth. I'm with South Mountain. This is Grayson. Um, we are on the planning committee for One Burt Gives. Um, we're so excited for One Burt Gives Giving Day. It's coming up really soon, two weeks from today actually, on November 29th. Um, this is our third annual One Burt Gives, which is a 24-hour Giving Tuesday event. It's held all online at one, the number one, burtgives.org. During our first year in 2020 and each year since, we've had the honor of our Burke County municipalities proclaiming each Giving Tuesday, which is the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, as Burke Nonprofits Day, aka One Burke Gives Giving Day. Uh, One Burke Gives is hosted by Burke County United Way, uh, which purchases the online platform every year so that each of the um, very worthy nonprofits in Burke County can fundraise and connect with donors and supporters on the platform for free. 
Uh, last year, we had 29 nonprofits that participated, and together the community raised over $100,000 in just that one day. This event brings the community together and allows donors to support as many of their favorite charities as they wish, right there in a one single platform. So we hope to see everyone virtually this year on One Burt Gives Giving Day. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Right. Mr. Chairman, one quick question. I believe I remember correctly that last year, I think I wrote for four entities and put it all in one check. Is that going to be allowed this year? Or? Sure, yeah. I'm sure it will be. So if somebody wants to give $50 a piece for 10, they can write you a check for 500? Yeah, I'm work. sure that that is, yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's possible. It'll be split up just the way you want it. Good deal. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Gentlemen, any other questions, comments? No, thank you very much. Okay, thanks. thanks all. Gentlemen, do we have a motion to adopt proclamation number 2022-09? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Ambly. All those in favor, signify with the uplifted hand. That is 5-0, Madam Clerk. All right, gentlemen, this moves us on to um, scheduled public hearings, BDI building reuse grant for Project Phil and public hearing. This will be presented by our friend Alan Wood, BDI President and CEO. Alan, how are you, sir? Uh, very well. Thank you, uh, Mr. Commissioner, staff, for allowing me to come this evening. Uh, we do have a building reuse grant for an expansion uh, and a renovation of an existing building uh, by an existing company. Uh, <clears throat> the grant application is for $500,000, uh, the planned creation of 78 new jobs. These jobs will pay approximately 20% more than the county average. Uh, roughly $49,000 will be the average. And each of those jobs does offer health insurance, which is always a prerequisite uh, to be included in this grant. Um, this uh, pro uh, will be uh, considered for approval on December the 8th. Uh, the city of Morganton has already approved their portion of this. They are the applicant, and as we usually do, we will split this match 50-50, which would be $12,500 for each uh, if approved. Uh, we're always happy to get these. It's a great opportunity. It's a very simple project. They put their budget in. They do the upfit, spend the money, create the jobs, process is over so uh, we've been very very successful and very happy to have a number of these over the last seven or eight years thank you Alan gentlemen questions comments before I open the public hearing I think I got all mine answered and presented. yes sir there being none at this time I'll now open the public hearing is there anyone here to speak to this issue If not, I will close the public hearing. Gentlemen, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to approve general fund fund balance appropriation of $12,500 for an economic development incentive for Project Field for the county's portion of the local grant match pending the notification of the building reuse grant award. Thank you, Commissioner Taylor. All those in favor of Commissioner Taylor's motion, signify with the uplifted hand. That is five zero, Madam Clerk. Thank you, gentlemen, for your continued support. Ellen, thank you. All right, gentlemen, this meeting brings us to informal public comments. I would remind those um, public speakers that come to the front, the uh, light is already uh, on, so just make sure to speak in the, to the microphone so those on YouTube can hear you. Uh, there is, uh, you have three minutes to uh, make your public comments. And uh, Madam Clerk, do we have anyone that wishes to speak? Yes, sir, we had several folks pre-register. I would call Mr. Ron Michaud. Good evening. How's everybody? Uh, I'm speaking on the terms about the uh, Burke County 
students. Uh, a lot of our kids don't go to college, can't afford to go, but I'm willing to volunteer if the county can come up with a program to where these kids can learn how to use a weed eater, run a business, uh, get into politics, uh, janitorial service, uh, and I'm willing to work with Western Piedmont. Uh, these kids need some kind of guidance after they get out of school or doing school. And I've learned from older gentlemen that's in that position uh, in the past, my grandfather neighborhood. <clears throat> and we could, I'd like to bring them around to the county, to the, let the finance office, let, let them see what they do. Brian, take them to Wayne's and see, let them see how he runs his business because everybody's not going to go to college and get a college degree. But if you have a trade, you can do something with your life. And also, I would like to warn the Burke County citizens. And I know everybody talks about homeless people. And <clears throat> I've seen needles. Uh, if you have your family out in parks, recreations, all over the county, please check the grass. They are standing the needles straight up with the caps off. I couldn't do a presentation with it tonight because of the rain and the box is wet. <clears throat> but I did it with the city. Uh, Mr. Causa was there. And this is a, a dangerous thing that's, that's going on now. And i just like to warn the Burke County citizens and Morganton citizens, citizens what's going on in our county. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ron. Mm -hmm. Madam Clerk? Caroline Avery. Give us just a second to reset the clock. There you go. Okay. Caroline Avery, 115 Riverside Court. Thank you for allowing me to be here. The first thing I need to say is, Maynard and Wayne, thank you so much for your 20 years of service. I thought y'all's reception was today, and I put on a dress so I could come and tell you about thank you personally. And I got the dates messed up. I'm out of town on Friday. So thank you. I know you all look at me and think uh, we don't agree on everything, but I look at you both, you all, and I see a lot of common ground between us. We care about our faith. We care about our families. We care about this community, and we care about our neighbors. And we probably all struggle with loving our neighbors as we are called to do. It's hard. I started speaking to you, the commissioners, in January of 2021. I was the sole speaker, and on your last night, here I am again. Gosh, if I had known then what I know now, would I have addressed you on that cold, dark January evening? I asked you to move this monument of hate from our county center. I asked you to move this monument that represents an insurrection against my country. This monument that represents the worst of my country, not the best. This monument that was all about keeping our black brothers and sisters in chains and remembering the poor souls that were lost in that battle. Would I have come to you if I had known how very, very difficult it would be to get any kind of response from you? Even after having speakers at every meeting, 155 people to date, 156 tonight, have come to you in favor of moving this monument or at the least asking you to appoint a commission or a committee to study this issue. You did a commission for animals, for dogs, but we can't do one for this. Yet time and again and again and again, we get no response, nothing. Not a budge, not a crumb, Lazarus. Would I have started if I had known, Scott? Well, it's been almost two years, and we're now Burke Coalition for Reconciliation. We have 250 members, partners, all from this county, 
They are like us in our country. They're imperfect. We're all imperfect. We have good and bad, but they are trying to love their neighbor every day, and they care deeply about their faith, their family, their community, and their neighbors. We are black, white, young, old, Republican, Democrat, hearing, hearing impaired, rich, poor, mostly Christian, but we open our arms to all. We meet every month in various churches at 5.30 on this night, and these churches adopt a month with us, and we are building a beautiful bond with one another. We hold on to hope because we know that eventually love will win, and this monument that lords over our central gathering place, reminding us of the worst of times and the worst of human nature, will be moved. And then this community can begin to truly move forward together, maybe understanding better the importance of loving our neighbor. I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you both. Thank you, Caroline. Madam Clerk. Carla Kincaid. Good evening. Had an opportunity to come this evening. Didn't have to counsel this evening. And Mr. Maynard, I think I saw you at the Veterans Day event on uh, on Friday. Veterans Day event. The Girl Scouts were there. Uh, of course, I'm back and again, and uh, in reference to the Confederacy itself. And maybe some people don't understand it. Maybe this is something that's been said over and over again. But um, we always, we've heard it in, in, it in its own words, the desire to preserve slavery was the cause for the succession by Southern states. But 150 years after the war, you know, we uh, still continue to cling to some myths. There's still some myths out there. And uh, because 48% of Americans in a Pew Research Center surveyed cited states' reasons as the reason for the war compared to 38% citing uh, slavery. And uh, this uh, site, uh, this is more astonishing because a review of the statements and documents by some of the Confederate leaders, which I read, on um, 1861, uh, February 2nd, 1861, Texas Declaration of Ca Causes for Succession we hold as undeniable truths that the governments of the various states and of the Confederacy itself were established exclusively by the white race for themselves and their pros prosperity, that the American, African American race had no agency in their establishment. They were rightfully held and regarded as an inferior independent race, and in that condition only could their existence in this country be rendered beneficial or tolerable. Another one, Alexander H. Stevens, Vice President of Confederacy Cornerstone speech in March, that was 21st, 1861. Our position is thoroughly identified with the institution of slavery, the greatest material interest of the world. Mississippi Declaration of Causes for Succession. They assume that the Negro is equal and hence conclude that he is entitled to equal privileges and rights with the white man. If their premises were correct, their conclusions would be logical and just, but their premises being wrong, their whole argument failed. And then in the same vice president of the Confederacy, Cornerstone speech in March, on the 20, March 21st, 1861, stated, our new government is founded upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery subordination to the superior race is his natural and normal condition. And then also South Carolina's Declaration of Causes for Succession, uh, December the 24th, 1860. A geographical line has been drawn across the Union, and all the states north of that line have united in the election of a man to the high office of President of the United States, whose opinions and, opinions and purposes are hostile to slavery. So those are just a few things in, in reference to Confederacy that we continue to hold on to today and some myths. And uh, again, you know, in God we trust. I'm not sure that's appropriate. It's at some in, in our courts in, in 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 this in this place where we're at now. Because if we trust in God, and I'm appalled at how many Christians and how many churches continue to hang on to 
uh, things that are not true. Things that are not true. And um, I would hope that maybe not in my time that the statue will be removed in generations to come. Thank you, Carla. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That'll move us to um, item number nine, consent agenda. Uh, I ask uh, County Manager to review the items. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, you have nine items on your consent agenda. Number one, clerk, reappointments to the Volunteer Agricultural Board. Number two, clerk, appointment to the CPCFPT. Number three, DSS, approval of renewal contract with Fair Terrace, HHS, the LLC. Item four, fire marshal, request for approval of a written agreement between Home Trust Bank and Brentleton Fire Protection and Rescue Association, Incorporated. Item five, general services, train USA contract for controls and UV air purification. Item six, partners health uh, management reports. Item seven, tax department tax collection reports for October 2022. Item eight, tax department release refund report for October 2022. And item nine, Western Piedmont Community College presentation of financial data for the period ending September 30th, 2022. That concludes your consent agenda. Thank you, Brian. Gentlemen, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we will follow the nine items that you presented. Thank you, Commissioner Taylor. All those in favor signify with uplifted hand. That is five zero, Madam Clerk. All right, this moves us up into items for decision, award of construction bids, for the Jonas Ridge Convenience Site. And this will be presented by Brian Steen and or Mark Della. Well, or Alan Glantz. We've got it. Mr. Allen will handle it. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you, Chairman Mulvey, Vice Chair Carswell, Commissioners, members of the public. On Friday, October 28th, two bids were received for the construction of the new Jonas Ridge Convenience Site. The low bidder was a contractor from here in Morganton, Fox Built Construction in the amount of $1,352,100. That design includes um, all of the convenience site improvements and um, also infrastructure that will be for that future park that will be next door, including the roadway, some parking, uh, a well and septic, and all that will serve that future use of the park. We haven't designed that yet, but, um, but that will be the next step. Uh, also, we're requesting equipment such as compactors and recycling boxes to have money to purchase those items. That, that's three compactors, four receiving boxes, and two 30-yard open-top uh, containers uh, storing recycling and other materials. Uh, we have a recent quote of 115000 and additionally, requesting a contingency line item for anything that might come up during the construction period in the amount of $100,000. Uh, this total request would be $1,567,100. We are excited to get this project underway and completed for the residents of Jonas Ridge. And uh, thank you. I can answer any questions for you. Gentlemen, any questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of questions. Um, number one, what was the cost of the last site we did? Do you know, do you know that number? Hmm. I don't believe I know. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, second question. Do we know any like site that's been done and what the cost of the, that is? My point is that it seems like a lot of money uh, for a site, uh, you know, and it just uh, kind of blew my mind when I read how much going to be over uh, $1.5 million in this uh, site. Well, it's a raw site, so it hasn't been developed in this way before. We need to put everything in place. There's, there's really nothing there now except a gravel driveway that went to an old home site. So it's a complete redevelopment or development of a, a facility for Burke County. Um, this kind of thing will, will last us for 30 years, and this is what that investment costs. The uh, request of the owner is 
was 115,000, is that correct? There was 115,000 for, that's gonna be the new equipment to serve that facility. Uh, it may, we're gonna do, put it out for bid. If it comes a little lower, we'll be uh, a little lower than that, but that's for um, the compactors for the site, uh, um, the receiving boxes, and uh, open yard containers as well. All that gets emptied, you know, basically on a daily or every other day basis at the site. The site will have an attendant up there, will be fenced in. We've got the site plan on the on the wall up here, but uh, it'll be a well-designed facility. And some of those, some of that infrastructure will uh, be utilized for that future park, which is on this map. It's not shown because it's you know not really designed right now, but it's off to the right at the bog. <coughs> Ron, do you recall how expensive the site was? Well, I don't think you were here either, come to think of the, it. The last one that I remember was Roney Road down on the south end, yes. and I, I, I want to say that was a million. Uh, and this is going to be beyond just being a convenience site because you're also putting into place things that can be utilized by that park in the future. And the equipment you're going to have to have uh, to make the site that functionable. So uh, going ahead and getting this the way we're talking about, I think uh, if you haven't gotten to know Mark very well, he, he doesn't like to spend a penny he ain't got to. And instead of going through the contractor and letting the contractor do a 10% markup on stuff that we could have bid out for ourselves is some of why I think they're wanting to go the route they're going here with the additional monies for the equipment. So, but I'm, I'm sorry I don't have a, a hard number for you for the Roney Road site. I think uh, the geography may have been a little bit different down there as well. Do we know or have an idea how much the one's going to cost us on 70 just between Eichert and Hildren? I don't, I don't know that we have a, a hard number yet. They're still finishing up some planning and design work. Yeah, it's, it's looking nicer down there. It really is. <laughs> yeah, it's we'll have that one um, probably out for bid in about a month, yep. plus or minus. So okay. we'll have a new number. Well, I was just a little bit trying to get a perspective of what we paid for the last one and how much this one was costing and I do notice and and support it I I think I'm the one of the commissioners that mentioned it that the new sites will have a place if somebody gets chemicals spilled on them they can take a bath and uh, right shower off safety and yeah, have a bathroom and uh, most of them don't even have a bathroom at them so that's right, and we're working on that issue as well, but we want this to be a, a modern facility that will serve the county for decades to come. So we think we, we've got a good plan for that. Yeah. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Any other questions or comments, gentlemen? All right, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, um, I'd like to make the motion to award the construction bid for the Jonas Ridge Convention Convenience Center in the amount of $1,352,100 to Foxbilt Construction and authorize additional funds to cover contingencies and equipment for the project in the amount of $215,000 and appropriate up to $1,567,100 from general fund fund balance and authorize the transfer of the project funds to the solid waste fund. Further author, authorize the county manager to execute the contract on behalf of the board subject to review and or revisions by the county attorney. Thank you, Commissioner Taylor. All those in favor, Commissioner Taylor's motion signify with uplifted hand. Madam Clerk, that carries 5-0. All right, this moves us on to item number two, lease extension for Jonas Ridge Convenience Site. Thank you again. Um, we're going to ask that this item be moved to the December meeting. We're still making contact with the family who owns the land, the Poors, and um, I believe they've been traveling a little bit, but we've been in contact with the daughter, and we think we can have something for you uh, as a contract for one year or less uh, next meeting. So we'll bring that again. General, what would you like to do? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move we move that to our next meeting. All right. All those in favor of Commissioner Britton's uh, motion signify with uplifted hand. That is 5-0, Madam Clerk. 
and we had the removal of item number three, so we're moving on to item number four. Proclamations honoring Wayne F. Abley Sr. and Maynard M. Taylor. And gentlemen, you should have a copy of those available. Gentlemen, I will read both. So the proclamation honoring Wayne F. Abley Sr.'s 20 years of public service as a county commissioner. Whereas Wayne F. Abley Sr., a resident of the Morgan and Township and member of the Republican Party, was first elected to public office in 2010 as a co county commissioner, and he served in this capacity for 20 consecutive years. And whereas Mr. Abley served as chairman of the Board of Commissioners in 2006, 2007, 2008, 2011, 2012, and 2016, and he served as vice chairman in 2003, 2005, and again in 2015. Through his participation, dedication, and leadership, many decisions and courses of action were established that benefited the citizens of Burke County for generations. Whereas during the course of a two decade period of dedicated civil public service, Mr. Abley attended at least 500 county commissioner meetings, if not more, in addition to attending thousands of committee meetings and countless public events, all while manage a popular local business that operates seven days a week. And whereas while serving on the board, Mr. Abley was an avid supporter of the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners, where he served as trustee for the risk management pools for 12 years. In addition to serving on numerous other boards, he also served on the local airport authority, the tourism development authority, and on the Western Piedmont Council of Government's policy board of director for many years. And whereas throughout his tenure, Mr. Abley and his fellow commissioners had to make many, many difficult decisions, especially during the great recession of 2008 and the global pandemic of 2020. However, he, he always tried to be fair in his decision-making process, and he was always mindful of citizens living on a fixed income. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that on behalf of the Burke County Board of Commissioners, Chairman Scott Mulway hereby expresses his sincere appreciation to Wayne F. Abley Sr. for his 20 years of honorable, dedicated public service and calls upon all citizens of Burke County, North Carolina, to do the same. Proclamation honoring Maynard M. Taylor's 20 years of public service as county commissioner. Whereas Maynard M. Taylor, a resident of the Acker Township and member of the Republican Party, was elected to public office in 2000 as a county commissioner, and he served on the Board of Commissioners until 2008. And whereas in 2010, Maynard M. Taylor was reelected to the Board of Commissioners, and he served in that capacity until 2022. And whereas Mr. Taylor served as chairman of the Board of Commissioners in 2005 and 2013, and he served as vice chairman in 2004, 2006, and 2014. And whereas during the course of his combined 20 years of dedicated civil public service, he attended at least 500 county commissioner meetings, if not more, in, in addition to attending thousands of committee meetings and countless public events. And whereas Mr. Taylor was an avid supporter of the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners and the UNC School of Government at Chapel Hill, and whereas through his tenure as a county commissioner, Mr. Taylor held firm to his convictions, regardless of popularity or public opinion, and in his faith, and in his faith in Lord Jesus Christ was instrumental in his decision-making process. And whereas throughout his tenure on the Board of Commissioners, Mr. Taylor was steadfast in his commitment to using public resources wisely, methodically, and for being a good steward of public funds. And whereas throughout his tenure, Mr. Taylor and his fellow commissioners had to make many, many difficult decisions. However, he never shirked his duty. He always tried to be fair, and he, always, he was always mindful of citizens living on a fixed income. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that on behalf of the Burke County Board of Commissioners, Chairman Scott Mulwee hereby expresses his sincere appreciation of Maynard M. Taylor for his 20 years of honorable, dedicated public service and calls upon all citizens of Burke County, North Carolina, to do the same.
approved this day of November 2022. Gentlemen. Mr. Chairman, it is my privilege and my honor to make the motion to approve proclamations number 2022-10 and number 2022-11. Thank you, Commissioner Carswell. All those in favor of Commissioner Carswell motion signify with uplifted hand. You can vote for yourselves, guys. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> and gentlemen, uh, and ladies and gentlemen out in the audience, let's please give them a standing round of applause. This brings us to reports and comments. I'll start with Margaret Pierce. Nothing to report, thank you. All right, Mr. Simpson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Since the last meeting of commissioners on October 18th, I have uh, worked with BDI concerning uh, deeds and deeds of trust on a promissory note as well concerning the Burt Business Park property to be acquired by Unix. I have assisted with issues concerning the uh, special meeting for the swearing in of new Sheriff Banks Hensman on the retirement of Sheriff Wisnett. I attended a special meeting uh, for interviews of the county manager candidate finalist and have worked with Chairman Mulvey and um, Human Resources Director Loren Johnson in putting together uh, proposed documentation for a new county manager. I have researched and completed my attorney's response to auditor's letter, which is necessary for finalizing the county audit and for forwarded it to the county's auditors. I have reviewed the uh, current county manager contract to ensure no issues exist which might affect his impending, impending retirement. I've assisted community development with the problems of the old George Hildebrand School being used for residential purposes and have reviewed the engineering agreement for the Rollins Avenue water project and made recommendations for its modification and execution. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Sampson. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to um, publicly thank Alan Glines and Mark Delahunt and Brian Tart and Mark Rash for their assistance in helping me get um, this this room renovated. It's uh, they, they're a delight to work with and been a great help. It looks beautiful. Great job to all of them. Thank you. Mr. County Manager. Uh, gentlemen, you know we use trailers this year for our Board of Elections to get out to the different precincts, and as far as I understand, it all went well. I have not heard of any problems, and uh, the trailers look very nice. I think they'll be around for a long, long time. Thank you. I'm going to switch it up and go to Commissioner Carswell, Vice Chair Carswell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to say a debt of gratitude to our county staff during Operation Greenlight. This county really looked good. Uh, the courthouse itself was just absolutely be beautiful. The county offices over here with the green lights on, on those. It was a great celebration of our veterans that, that are almost 6,000 plus here in Burke County, and I do appreciate what our staff have done. Um, Mr. Chairman and I will be uh, leaving in the morning at 10 o'clock for a trip to uh, Raleigh for the legislative goal section for the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. Uh, the goal started out at about 350 some, and we've got them narrowed down to uh, a manageable number to carry forth after Scott makes some more votes. A uh, manageable number to carry to the General Assembly this year. Probably the best set of legislative goals that I've seen in a very long time. So uh, as we move down, uh, uh, pray for us for safe trips and uh, a good meeting for three days and we'll be back Friday afternoon for a, another celebration for YouTube <laughs> if 
traffic don't get us, but we'll be here for that. So uh, again, uh, uh, we, we never say enough about our staff here in Burke County. A, a great, great, great group of people. Well said. Commissioner Britton? No comment other than wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, sir. All right, so the best for last. Mr. Taylor? Uh, we've got uh, an announcement I need to make uh, from the highway meeting. Uh, we, do, we meet tomorrow instead of the fourth Wednesday, but I hope you notice in the newspaper that the North Carolina Department of Trans Transportation is inviting the public to, to provide input on proposed changes to the bridge and the ramps at exit 118, that's old Highway 10. Um, they're completely revamping that. They're gonna turn the bridge down to a skeletal bridge and uh, they want you to uh, comment on it. And you can do that um, at the uh, church at First Baptist there on 18, um, on the 17th, which is what, Thursday, from 4 to 7 p.m. It's a walk in and browse and look and study and then make comments, but uh, it's gonna take some property on the right side if you cut off going east, they're gonna try to take away the two-way traffic on the left, but they are requesting some uh, comments and uh, input uh, from the public. So if you'll remember to do that on Thursday. And then the other thing I wanted to acknowledge today is that uh, I sure was proud of Burke County uh, for the elections. Uh, I said in my notes here that I believe we've had the most active uh, midterm election in my lifetime. I attended four forums and they included local, uh, local candidates, they included regional candidates, they included uh, statewide candidates and that we even had people in our county on two occasions that were running and campaigning for some of our candidates in North Carolina that were from out of state and that included uh, Florida, what was the other state? Uh, but anyhow, we had a lot of activity and a lot of people voted I'm not sure we had the largest, but if we didn't, I think it was second to the largest. Had a lot of good candidates that ran that didn't get elected in the primary, but we had a lot of good people elected uh, from those that ran. But we had a, shall I say, a boatload of good participation and good people running for the county. And I say all this to say, gentlemen, that sometimes we complain, sometimes we're not happy, but there's nothing more proof than what just happened in Burke County during our election process, that our election process is in well hands, in good hands. And uh, it, it, it proves that it works. And people have a voice and who sits on this board and who sits on every other, every other board that serves the citizens of Burke County. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tate. Scott, I don't know where this fits in, but 20 years ago, when Maynard and I were on the board, of course, we had lost our uh, county manager at that, that time. And I don't think we probably give him enough credit, but. We hired one heck of a county manager for the last 20 years, and I don't, I don't know what we're going to do for him, if anything, but he's been one heck of a county manager for Burke County. I t I'll tell you, I think, uh, I think the world of them, and uh, 
I, I remember when he came here, he couldn't make up his decision, uh, decision to come. He came and hawed around, and we had to just about push him to make a darn decision. And I took make him all around the county, all, all around the county, go around and showed him all the sites or whatever. But he wouldn't make the darn decisions. So we, we had to sort of push him a little bit. I, I, don't, I don't remember how we pushed him, but we pushed him a little bit. And uh, he's made Burke County his home, and I hope he's going to stay here because he's been an asset to, to this board and to our county. I couldn't have said it better. Thank you for those comments. Well, speaking of appreciation, I want to remind citizens to please uh, attend Wayne and Maynard's public service celebration this Friday. Uh, November 18th from 4 to 6 p.m. here in the commissioner's meeting room that has been redone and looks beautiful and I would remind citizens please don't litter spay and neuter your pets and um, I do want to as Commissioner Taylor say congratulate all election winners and I do see one of them out in the audience that will be joining us as commissioner here so congratulations on uh, next month and um, uh, also, uh, future Commissioner Burns, and so um, welcome. Them. I will welcome them to the team. I do want to say Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I want everybody to say have a safe and happy holiday. And um, at this time, I will turn it over to Madam Clerk for any vacancy announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, members of the audience. We have the following opportunities for citizens to serve on county boards and committees. The Adult Care and Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee, City of Morganton, Board of Adjustment and Planning Boards for the ETJ, Burke Senior Center Advisory Council, the Child Protection and Child Fatality Prevention Team, the East Burke Senior Center Advisory Board, Burke County Board of Adjustment, Council on Aging, Burke County Board of Health, Partners Consumer and Family Advisory Committee, representing traumatic brain injury and the Hickory Regional Planning Commission. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And as Madam Clerk said, we do encourage all uh, citizens to participate. We often have folks saying, how do I get involved? Well, there is a whole list of ways to become involved. Mr. Chairman, I, I have a question for the uh, county attorney. When we're looking at the ETJs, we've been trying to, to fill those in Hildebrand and the Morgan Arena, but recently the ETJ uh, area was, was slashed tremendously. And uh, we actually, Kay and I went through the names uh, down in Hildebrand the other day. The uh, person that we had on the board down there, uh, ETJ and that, for the Hickory Planning Commission, had some bad health. There's not another individual in the ETJ that can take that position, not one. We went through every one of them. Is it necessary, Mr. County Attorney, that we, we man these particular boards? Or are they state mandated, or can we take another look at that? Well, um, it's aspirational. We, uh, the county has a right to have a voice uh, in what the cities do by appointing citizens from the uh, jurisdiction that's within the county but is controlled by the cities. Um, if we can't find anyone to fill those positions, then we lose that voice. But it doesn't affect the, uh, it, it doesn't affect um, the ability of, of, of those boards to operate. It just uh, loses a county voice when we can't find a county member to participate. With all of that in mind and being very aspirational, <laughs> is there another avenue that we could probably, ex does it have to be from the ETJ? Can we fudge a little? Yes, it has to be from, they have to reside within the ETJ. As I thought. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Carswell. Well, gentlemen, there is a need for closed session, so um, 
I will accept a motion to go in closed session pursuant to NCGS 143-318.1183456. So moved. Thank you. All those in favor, signify with uplifted hand. That is 5-0, Madam Clerk. We'll take a five minute break and then we will meet in closed session. Gentlemen, we had a proper motion to come out of closed session. There was no action taken. So, gentlemen, uh, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Thank you. All those in favor, signify with uplifted hand. Motion carried. 5-0, Madam Clerk.